what am I doing with my life? I don't know. <laughs> I actually dressed cute today. I feel very put together. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to do a tag that I saw Reagan do on Peru's project. I'll link her channel down below. But she did a tag talking about the most intimidating books on her TBR. And that's what I'm going to do today because I have a lot of books on my TBR that I'm super scared of and just haven't been able to get to slash finish. So let's get into it. Okay, the first question is, what is a book you simply cannot finish? I have three that I just can't seem to finish, so I will talk about all of them. First is Upstream by Mary Oliver. This is a essay collection. It's all about nature. And I got this collection maybe in May. It was like towards the beginning of the pandemic. I went and did curbside pickup at my favorite bookshop um, and I got this and I started it. I made it like halfway through or just about halfway through and then just never finished it because I don't know. I think I have a problem with like being in the right mood for a book or something and I just I can't seem to finish it unless I'm in the right headspace. So I read a bunch of these essays and I really love Mary Oliver's writing. She has a gorgeous writing style, but I just could not seem to finish this. So I would like to at some point, but eventually I took it off my Goodreads currently reading because I'm like, I haven't touched this in like three months. What am I doing with my life? I don't know. <laughs> Another one that I can't seem to finish is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. Shirley Jackson is one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, and I still cannot finish this and I'm nearly halfway done with this actually But like for some reason I just can't finish it um, Don't know why I'm annotating it and I was really enjoying it Like I have a lot of annotations and I absolutely love it because I love Shirley Jackson But I just can't do it for some odd reason I'd really like to finish that at some point and then finally the bane of my existence at this point a Beautifully Foolish Endeavor by Hank Green, which I have been trying to read since the summer. I got 100 pages in, just didn't do it. I think what happened mostly is that I started school and this is a pretty big book and I had a lot of reading because I was an English major. So I just decided, you know, let me put this aside, do my homework, and then I just never came back to it. I actually have the audiobook. I got it on Libby and now it's expired, so. <laughs> Yay me! Along that same vein, uh, the next question is name a book, book that you haven't read because it's a sequel. And again, this one. I am slightly nervous about uh, my expectations for this because the first one I gave 5 out of 5 and it was magnificent. And I think part of my inability to read this is my nervousness that it's not going to be as splendid and perfect. And it also really hurts my heart that I bought this in hardcover like right when it came out and didn't read it like that oh my poor bank account <laughs> the next question is name a book that you haven't read because it's brand new so this isn't brand new in terms of release but it is the most recent book that i have purchased and that is nothing to see here by kevin wilson um i know that this is a very popular book um, but I just recently picked it up because I've had my eye on it for a while and it looks like something I'd be interested in. I just got it a few days ago, so I have not gotten a chance to pick it up. But I love the cover and I know that everybody, everyone that I've heard that's read this has absolutely loved it. So I'm going to be picking this one up soon, hopefully. The next question is to name a book that you haven't read because you've read something else by the author and didn't love it. And this one has been on my TBR since last January. I got it at The Strand in New York City and it is Poemsia by Lang Leave. It is actually a signed edition, so I feel a little bit guilty for not having read it, but I picked this up because it, the concept for it sounded really interesting, um, but I've read Lang Leave's poetry and it just felt like Instagram poetry-esque to me and I'm not super into that kind of genre. Um, I was at one point and that's why I bought this because I didn't read it right away I kind of got out of the phase of that kind of writing and this is fiction It's not poetry and it's not written in verse or anything But like just the writing style I'm concerned that it's gonna be that kind of kind of you know Instagram poetry-esque style and I'm just not Super excited about that. Okay, the next question is to name a book that you haven't read because you're not in the mood and I have a few for this 
Um, I am somebody who really reads based on whatever mood I'm in, and if I'm not vibing with a book, I don't read it. <laughs> so I have March Sisters by a bunch of different authors, um, specifically Carmen Maria Machado, which is an author that I absolutely love. She wrote um, Her Body and Other Parties and In the Dream House. Both of those got five stars for me, so I don't know why I'm putting this off. So this is basically a collection of uh, essays about little women and its impact on society and literature and history. Um, and I was super into the new Little Women movie. I absolutely loved it, saw it multiple times. And I am really interested in this concept, but I feel like nonfiction often sits on the shelf for a long time for me before I get to it just because I'm not really as gripped to immediately read it as I am if I pick up a fiction book. So actually all of these are technically nonfiction. well, kind of. The next one being Dearly by Margaret Atwood. This is a poetry collection. Every time I've read one of her poems, I'm like, wow, that's just incredible. So I do really want to read this soon. I don't want to do this collection a disservice by being in a bad mood or not in the best mood to read poetry. Because I feel like with poetry, I want to be like sitting outside, enjoying nature, being thoughtful, having a clear mind and like in order to actually fully enjoy uh, poetry. So I haven't really had a moment like that considering it's been winter and everything's been crazy. So I would like to read this, but hopefully when it gets warmer and I can actually create that space for myself, I will actually read this. And then finally, this is a memoir that I am very interested in, or was at least when I picked it up, but I haven't really been in the mood, and that is Haben, a memoir by Haben Girma. This is about um, a deaf-blind woman who was at Harvard Law School. This is a little fact that no one probably knows about me. I actually wrote my capstone thesis for my degree on um, cochlear implants and sign language and the deaf community at large. Um, because it is a topic that I am pretty invested in and I have been interested in for a very long time. So I picked this up as part of my kind of deaf culture studies that I was interested in. Um, and I got it, what was it? Probably like last March or last February, right before um, the pandemic happened. Because I remember I was on the way home from school and there's a bookshop right on Main Street when I'm at school. Um, and I went and I got this and I think that was the last time that I was in the bookshop. Um, so yeah, I've had this for like a year and haven't read it, haven't been in the mood. Okay, the next question is, what's a book that you haven't read because it's huge? And you can kind of see back here. Ooh, let me grab them. I have a few for this. I have not read any of these because they are very big and thus very intimidating. So they are East of Eden by John Steinbeck, which part of this is because it's a classic kind of. Um, and I am intimidated by reading classics. I don't read them very often, but this is literally giant. Um, what is it, like 600 pages? To me, that's a giant book because I do read pretty short books usually. It sounded super interesting when I picked it up, and I do want to read more Steinbeck because I have read him before, and I absolutely love him. Um, I think his writing is really great, but it is giant, and I just haven't felt like putting the time in to read a 600-page book lately. The next one is Romantic Outlaws by Charlotte Gordon, and this is about Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley. I got this right after I started reading Frankenstein for my Frankenstein class last semester, and we learned a lot about Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley in that class, but I wanted to know more. So I did pick this up, and I will read it eventually, but it was also a pretty big book, and it's also very dense because it's a nonfiction, you know, biography. Um, so I will get to it eventually. I really love the cover and the spine. They're really cool, but it's just a giant book and I'm very intimidated. And then finally, the biggest book on my TBR is Duck's Newburyport by Lucy Ellman. It is just absolutely huge. This was recommended to me by a few people and it sounds like something I would enjoy. It's basically just a mother, you know, housewife in Ohio just talking about her life and what you know she thinks about for like literally a thousand pages yeah it's about a thousand pages um but the thing that's most intimidating about this is not only is it huge but like the text covers the whole entire page like all the way through without dialogue tags or anything like that so that's a lot of words that i have to read in this book um so that's very intimidating. I'm like a little bit nervous that I'm gonna put a lot of time into reading this and not love it. I really hope that when I do read it, it's a five out of five because it won't feel worth it to me to have read a thousand pages and not absolutely love it. The next question is a book that you cover bought 
or bought for the cover, but have iffy reviews. So this is The Virgin Suicides by Jeffrey Eugenis. I bought this because of the cover, but also because I've heard good things about it. But after I bought it, I heard bad things from a different booktuber that I like. Um, so that was unfortunate. So hopefully I do actually enjoy this. I'm not sure which, you know, perspective I trust more. Um, but it is a beautiful cover and I did pick it up and I was like, I absolutely have to get this because it's just gorgeous and I've heard good things. But then I proceeded to hear bad things. So I hope I still like this, but I just haven't read it because now I'm like, the, the thought of it is like mildly tainted in my mind. So that's that. The penultimate question is one that I actually added to the, the tag for myself because I think it is really important to talk about. Um, things that are intimidating based on the language alone or the fact that they're classics or whatever. Um, so one of them is Matilda by Mary Shelley because I read Frankenstein and, and I did love it, but it is at times hard to get through. And I can tell that even though this is a very small like little um, book, that it is going to be a process to get through in terms of the language. So I am intimidated to read this one. And then the other one that I'm intimidated by based on language is The Taming of the Shrew, obviously by Shakespeare. I've read a lot of Shakespeare and I have gotten through all of it just fine, but there still is that level of intimidation when you pick up a Shakespeare play. And to read it now in a non-academic sphere is kind of intimidating. I'm pretty sure that every time I've read Shakespeare, it's been in the context of academia whether it was in high school or college and this will be the first one that I'll read outside of any of that um, just on my own so it is a bit intimidating to read a Shakespeare play without the assistance or you know conversation of other students and the, the professor so that is a bit intimidating and the last question on this tag is what is the most intimidating book on your TBR and I'm pretty sure this will be absolutely no surprise, but it is A Little Life by Hanya Yanagihara. Not only is it giant, but it is apparently the saddest book everyone has ever read. So I'm a bit intimidated to spend that much time reading a book that is so sad. <laughs> I hope that when I read this, I can enjoy it for the writing and appreciate it for what it's doing, even though I might not enjoy it plot-wise or you know event-wise, um, but hopefully I still like it for other reasons. So those are all the books that I am most intimidated by on my TBR. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did and want to see videos similar to this, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.